Hello everyone, this is Tom in Los Angeles and today I'm gonna do the K2Z tag video. I was tagged by Drawn to Stories, who has a really fun uh, and kind of a recent, uh, recently created channel from Finland, from beautiful Finland. And, uh, and also from, uh, and I was tagged by um, Rose as a scanning handling about the books. So uh, this uh, tag has been created by Jim. Uh, Jim, uh, who has been creating uh, quite a lot of uh, fun uh, tags from Georgia, the Republic of Georgia. And uh, I've seen that somebody has uh, mixed this uh, uh, alphabetic tags. Uh, this time I'm going to do from K to Z in particular, and I'm, I'll try to move a little quickly uh, across them. So here we go. K is for King. What is your favorite book about royalty, fictional or real? Um, my favorite book about royalty is uh, Robert Silverberg, Gilgamesh the King. This is a retelling in prose of the famous uh, epic of Gilgamesh which is more than 3,000 years old. And uh, it's marvelous, it's just marvelous. Silverberg is uh, known as a science fiction author, but he has a huge, huge love of uh, ancient history as well, and literature. And uh, this little booklet, which is it's not a booklet, it's actually 270 pages, is um, a great retelling of the story um, in uh, the library journal. It says, fantasy, myth, and ancient history interweave seamlessly in this powerful retelling of the epic of Gilgamesh. And the New York Times book review said, this is a sensitive, intuitive retelling of the famous epic. It might be a, a more fun and dynamic way, let's say modern way, to enjoy the story of Gilgamesh um, as compared to the original, which is also uh, possible to find and read but uh, it might be a little bit slower and not as uh, gripping an adventure as uh, as this one so i would recommend it i would recommend it if you're interested in, in gilgamesh second one l is for librarian who is your favorite librarian my favorite librarian he was a librarian for librarian for um, a little while so for some years is uh, luis borges Jorge Luis Borges. Um, one of his famous stories is about the, the library of um, Babel, I believe. And, uh, uh, you know, since then, uh, I, I really loved everything that, is, uh, that I've read by Borges, uh, short stories in particular. Uh, if anyone has a, a good book to recommend about uh, the library of uh, Alexandria, in particular, that disappeared or burned or whatever happened to it, I would love to hear that because that's something I've been looking for. M is for magazine. Do you have any magazine subscriptions or a favorite magazine? Yes, I used to have a subscription to science fiction magazines, uh, um, both analog and Asimov science fiction. Unfortunately, I had to humbly admit that I don't have time to read them all. Um, in these years um, because of work and so I had to suspend it but I know that I'll go back to them because they are generally wonderful and there's always two or three stunning stories in, in these magazines. The subscriptions I have and that I still kind of manage to read during my month, they're monthly, are the famous National Geographic. This is the February issue that obviously is talking about virus. And I just like the way they present uh, some um, articles about nature, about uh, the earth, and uh, and also travel articles, very well written travel articles. And the other one is an Italian magazine, which is um, bi-weekly, uh, called La Civiltà Cattolica. It's a Catholic magazine. Um, in fact, the writers are mainly Jesuits uh, who are part of the Vatican. Then. N is for news. Where do you usually find your news? <laughs> Good question. Um, it's just a, as an overarching comment, I've been more and more disappointed by how difficult it's been um, 
for me at least, to find uh, uh, news outlets, uh, especially in print, um, because I don't, I don't watch TV, but uh, news outlets that have some, uh, at least a grain of, uh, of objectivity. It's been uh, almost uh, a, a gradual degrading for even some that used to be serious uh, or less biased and now they are more and more. So it's really difficult. In these days I try to get at least a couple of um, different takes on the same stories and so I try to read uh, from the Wall Street Journal, sometimes from the Financial Times and from uh, The Economist. Out of these three uh, titles, uh, I feel like I get at least uh, some different angles about the same news story that are somewhat realistic. Uh, but uh, overall, it's pretty disappointing. Uh, letter O. Letter O, I don't have a prompt for O, so can you make up your own? Sure, so for O, uh, I always like to present graphic novels, especially very intriguing ones and maybe not very well-known ones. So with letter O, uh, Rotten O reminds me of uh, Sergeant Orsini, who is one of the main characters, Sergeant Major Orsini, is one of the main characters of this beautiful uh, graphic novel called White Death. It's a uh, historic fiction based on the Italian front during World War I, the First World War, in, uh, in the Alps. Uh, in fact, uh, not too far from Trento, which is the town where my, my parents live and where I grew up in Italy. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful masterwork. I, I cannot say mm, enough great things about this book. Uh, to start, you know, starting with the technique that's used. As you can see, it's basically a charcoal and chalk on grey paper to try and convey the sense of uh, black and white uh, that uh, soldiers up in the snow of the Alps uh, would experience. The idea for this uh, book came to the authors, the creators, when uh, they were watching a documentary about the First World War <clears throat> and they realized that uh, on the Italian front of uh, the First World War an estimated 70 to 100,000 troops were killed in avalanches deliberately caused by the enemy. Uh, to us, this seemed to take the ruthlessness and human inhumanity of warfare to new heights, turning nature itself into a weapon of war. This is all true facts. And uh, the way it's uh, depicted and, uh, um, and, and, and also the, the plotting is interesting because uh, uh, the, the creative team are experienced guys in the world of uh, comics. It's just that this is one of their labor of, labors of love. They didn't do it as part of any type of commitment or contract with a, with a big uh, publisher. It's their own labor of love. And, and generally, my experience is the best way to find this type of gems in the graphic novel department. So O for Orsini. You see what I did there. Uh, P is for Penguin. Which is your favorite publisher? I'm... Um, I honestly don't know. I, I, I'm not, uh, I, I cannot answer this question because I, I don't have one. Sorry. Letter Q. Q is for queer. Who is your favorite LGBTQ author? Um, my favorite author, queer author, is Arthur C. Clarke. And uh, hopefully you knew already that Arthur C. Clarke was uh, gay. Uh, if you didn't, now you do. He moved to Sri Lanka, I believe in the 60s, if not the 50s, um, because in his times in uh, England, it was not a great idea, especially for a celebrity, to come out as uh, being gay. And uh, he had homosexual relationships in Sri Lanka without any problems, because the environment was a little bit more open towards that type of uh, uh, person in uh, 
at least in the area of Sri Lanka where he ended up. I, I really don't know about the entire country, the entire island. And uh, he, I would almost uh, say that he is my favorite uh, English writing author, bar none, Arthur Clarke. R is for Russia. Do you have a favorite novel, poem or writer from Russian literature? I think I have many, but maybe one of my favorite novels is The Death of Ivan Illich by Tolstoy. Um, very, very deep, uh, a very deep um, reflection upon death and, uh, and surprising in many ways, even if in its simplicity. So The Death of Ivan Illich. S is for science fiction. What is your favorite science fiction novel? It has to be one of Arthur C. Clarke's novels and uh, just for the sake of it, I'm going to mention The City and the Stars, but I love them all. T is for trope, tag and many other things. You can create your own prompt for T. Okay, so for T, I am going to say the Tralfamadorians, who famously are the fictional obviously fictional aliens <laughs> invented by um, Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, by Kurt Vonnegut I only read uh, Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse 5 and uh, for me it's a very recent read. As I discussed with uh, good uh, uh, Pai at uh, Attention, he's got a really creative channel on booktube, Attention, and I discussed this with him because he liked Kurt Vonnegut as an author and uh, I told him I read Slaughterhouse 5 uh, with pretty high expectations knowing that it's a classic etc and honestly I was underwhelmed I was very underwhelmed I thought it was almost bad uh, all this uh, repeating of so it goes as a as a gimmicky and uh, inelegant type of device. Easy to understand, but uh, overplayed. overplayed. And uh, this type of time displacement idea, which for when this uh, book has been written, was nothing original, especially in science fiction. This is, I wouldn't say this is a science fiction book. It's almost uh, a mockery of, of science fiction for how it talks about uh, these Tralfamadorians, these aliens who allegedly had uh, kidnapped the, the main protagonist. So it's a bit messy. Uh, I, I certainly understand the importance of uh, a classic that talks about the destruction of Dresden in, uh, in Germany, but that which is the most interesting to me part of the book is very limited. It's, it's probably not even 15% of the book. The rest is uh, unsurprising. So, um, listening to Pai at uh, attention, I want to listen to him and, and trust his uh, uh, bookish tastes. I will go on in my exploration of Kurt Vonnegut and I'm going to read uh, The Sirens of Titan, which I understand uh, uh, I should enjoy a little bit more. And so I won't, uh, I won't give up just because of this uh, with the uh, good old Vonnegut. The next one is uh, you, is for unicorn. What is your favorite mythical animal? Um, I think my favorite mythical animal is a centaur because, and I think somebody else who did this tag already mentioned it. In my case, I love the centaurs because they are such a clear representation of our main struggle as human beings, of being um, an organism uh, in a constant fight and conflict with our animal part. Uh, it's such a perfect representation of that very human struggle. V is for Violet. What is your favorite Violet book? I did find a Violet book on my shelves and it's uh, the Foundation Trilogy. One of the best science fiction books really that I've ever read. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, hardcover edition of the Foundation. And um, W is for Y. If you have a booktube channel, why did you start it? I started my booktube channel, I realized I started my booktube channel because um, for company and uh, for the fact that uh, um, when I am slightly obsessive about books, uh, about how I talk about them, about how I treat uh, my books, etc., finding people on booktube that um, 
are even more obsessive than, than me about it, uh, made me feel like I'm not crazy. So that's, uh, that's been great. And that's why I wanted to be part of this community, which, is, which has been really great in the last months for me. Um, and then we have uh, X for Xenocide. What novel featuring a Xenocide interested you? I'm afraid I'm gonna have a cop-out type of answer here. I'm going to choose uh, um, a novel called Xenocide by Orson Scott Card, which I really enjoyed, um, but that's uh, a pretty easy answer to this kind of difficult question. And uh, why is for YouTube, apart from booktubers, what YouTube channels do you like to watch? A maximum of three. Okay, so my three YouTube channels are uh, uh, History Matters, which I would recommend to anybody because it's a very um, simplified but really well done way to approach some uh, historical topics that maybe you're not very familiar with at a high level before maybe you dive into a book about it or start reading a history book about that matter. History Matters. Uh, then I follow quite closely um, Bishop Robert Barron's uh, YouTube channel. is a bishop of uh, our Los Angeles uh, area, Santa Barbara. And uh, a third channel is called Earth Converse, which I particularly like. Earth Converse is a fairly recent channel um, by Penelope Mevor, and it talks about uh, our relationship with the earth, with nature. Um, it's got a lot of interesting interviews with uh, leaders and uh, authors and writers who, even though it's not part of Booktube, um, with this type of uh, background in uh, uh, an interest in our earth and nature and how we relate to it. So I certainly recommend that one as well. And finally, Z is for zero. What is your favorite book about nothing? Um, this is my favorite book about nothing. Rube Goldberg, Inventions. It's uh, delightful, delightful. If you know it, you know it's delightful. And uh, if you don't know it, you should rush and uh, find some of these uh, these books. It's from the beginning of the 20th century, I believe, and uh, he's so ingenious. He was so ingenious in coming up with this uh, so-called Rube Goldberg machines that you could very, very fairly so say that are about absolutely nothing, but they're so stimulating and uh, fun. They're just a delight to to read and to discover. So definitely the great and late Rube Goldberg. Thank you everyone for watching this tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.